Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Hester and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making Cruciferous Crunch. Is your fridge bursting at the seams like mine is? Are you being a little lazy when it comes to mealtime and not wanting to grate all the things up and chop all the things up over and over again? Cruciferous Crunch is the answer for you. Why? We get to use cabbage, celery, um, broccoli stems, kale, um, really anything that you have around, especially if you have a handful of it. We're, a lot of times I'll make a large batch. We're gonna make a small batch today. It's basically made off of Trader Joe's recipe, which is sliced very thickly and I do it differently. <laughs> I use it in salads, I use it in bowls, I use it in stir fries, soups, all the things. So basically it's like having a powerhouse vegetable mix all ready to go right in your fridge. Here's what you're gonna need to make cruciferous crunch. The first thing is you want some cabbage. It can be green cabbage, it can be purple cabbage, it can be any kind of cabbage you want it to be. Uh, I typically like to use green and purple, but this is what I have. We're going to want a peeled carrot. And depending what the season is, today we're going to use some of these beautiful Brussels sprouts that I quartered. We're still going to go ahead and shred them, and that's going to be okay. I get stems and, with the broccoli, and Cheryl doesn't like them, so I've peeled any of the tough parts away and then we're gonna shred that up in our mix. I also got some beautiful baby cauliflower. Cauliflower leaves and broccoli leaves are actually super nutritious, so we can shred it up in this or not. That's up to you. And then I also have a leaf and some other bottoms from that cauliflower that we're gonna use. You can also put things like kale or Swiss chard, other veggies, because basically we're making a base mix. So I'm gonna use my food processor for this. I don't love using my food processor because it's very hard to clean with all of this. And there is a trick that Joanne sent me about putting um, cellophane over here. That's great if you're using the chopping blade. We're gonna use a grating blade, so that's not gonna be working for us. So if you hate it like I do, and you have a KitchenAid, this is something that I've used. And basically <laughs> what it is, is it's an attachment that goes on your KitchenAid that you can slice, and it's got two different size graters. I think it was about $35, so it's cheaper than a food processor. Um, but it's up to you. If you have a food processor, I'm not gonna do the cabbage. If your cabbage is super fresh, and cr extra crisp, you probably can put it through the shredding blade. But in general, if it is at all a little bit older, which is how I tend to make my cruciferous crunch, then you're just gonna wanna go ahead and hand cut it. We're gonna do that. Now, a lot of you may not have used the, the shredding and slicing blades on your food processor, so we're gonna go over that. Okay, I'll show you from the side. So your bowl goes on just like always and locks into place this guy and if you can't find it this is the guy you need to put the blades on or something that looks like that it goes on the inside and then it locks did you hear that little click so that's awesome then with this blade you can see they're small and big but what you have to do so that the little humps are at the top so that means that's the small side that's the larger side we want to use the larger side up Okay, and I'll let you see how that looks from above too, right? So it just goes on, so that's in there, and then this goes on here. And see, you can see that. Then you have to lock on your food processor like normal. Mine has two slots, like a smaller one and a bigger one, okay? So depending on what we're gonna shred through there, so let's go ahead, and so this is a, a big carrot. I don't know that it will fit through this blade, this or not. Yeah, not really. So I'm gonna cut it. 
I'll move it just a little bit so you guys give myself a little bit of room. So I'm gonna just cut it into a little bit more manageable sections for me. I think this size will go through. So let's see if that, yeah, that's gonna go through so I can put that in there. And I probably can put one of these halves in there. Okay, now everything is going to have to be attached well, sealed and all of that for this to work. This, and I'm gonna be pushing down and I'm gonna press on. And so that made short work of that, right? That's why we're using this. Because if you can you grade it? Absolutely. If you don't have a food processor and you don't have the money to go on Amazon and get a multi hundred dollar product, let's talk about a few things you could do. One is you can look at your local thrift store, though sometimes they don't have these shredding blades with them. So if they have everything, definitely check that out. And you can probably get one from for about 30, 20 to 30 dollars pretty easily. You can also go to Amazon Warehouse. So when you're on the Amazon site, go up to the top where it clicks down and says books, CDs, all these other things. There's an Amazon Warehouse, put in food processor, you'll get a return. And what that means is a lot of times it's just a dinged box. You can use a hand shredder and shred some of this. I always shred part of my finger. So I prefer not to do that, but you do you. And um, if you have a little, a little food processor, we could have chopped some of this up and we could have just used the blade to make a small thing, but it's not gonna be quite as, um, it's not gonna have the same mouth feel, if that makes sense. So let's take a look from up here. So you can kind of see, this is what the large shredding blade does. So it's a lot like the carrots you might buy shredded. So guess what? You could shred some carrots this way too. We do have a couple of little pieces left. So let's make sure that we put it back with the big part up. That's a mistake I make. <laughs> Maybe that's one you won't make. Let me see if I can get this a little more in the picture. Okay, so we can also take some things like this. So the broccoli, we can go ahead and cut. And as you can see, I may need to cut some of this middle part out. So I'm gonna cut it into quarters. And you find that sometimes and it's okay. Just get it out. Actually, since these are a little more delicate, I'm gonna use the small shoot. I'm going to try and layer these in here to the best of my ability. <laughs> we can probably put a little bit of this cauliflower in there at the same time, if not all of that little bit. Okay. So once again, it's shredding time. And you're still going to get some caught here and sometimes a lot. I'm putting it off to the side because we may be able to squeeze it in with some more things and try again. This is what that looks like. See how that's a fairly big piece? Sometimes I'll take anything that went through that's a little bit bigger than I'd like and we can always put that through again. Okay. Let's go ahead, I've got quite a bit of Brussels sprouts and you don't have to have all of these vegetables because in the summer, you're probably not gonna have Brussels sprouts and that's okay. Let's get these guys in there. And I'm packing it in fairly tight to make it easier for more of it to go all the way through and not get caught because that lets me really press down better with my little presser. Okay, so now Brussels sprouts. See, there's a little bit less of that. And these are more leafy, so honestly, I'm gonna just let those go on in. I'm okay if there's some leafiness in there. But see, we've got a little bit of these different textures. So Cruciferous Crunch Mix adds a lot of texture, so 
that's why it's so good in all the different things. So if I'm put, a lot of times I will take cruciferous crunch, maybe four cups, saute it, and then add tofu and my tofu spices for a tofu scramble. And it adds a lot of interest and color. Same thing if I'm doing a stir fry. I can still add in bok choy, broccoli, all broccoli florets, all the different things I want to add, but I could put this in too, and that adds a nutritious element and a textural element. All right, so let's get some more of this stuff in. And I'm going to, we've got some more cauliflower that I'm going to show you how to use. I'm going to see if I can get any of these bits. I'm going to try shredding these little leaves. I don't know how that's going to do, but let's find out, shall we? And you can see this way before we've been packing it from the top. You can see how I'm packing it down. Let's get, and I'm just going to um, cut some of this cauliflower. It's really kind of a cool heirloom looking cauliflower. Okay, remember the more we pack, the more likely everything's going to get shredded. Wow. Okay, time to go. All right, so let's look. And this looks really good. So a lot of the things that we had before, and actually I'm just going to eat this carrot. We're going to put the rest of the cauliflower, which is not a lot. If you have any other little pieces of things, now's the time. <laughs> okay. And see, that didn't shred as well because it wasn't packed in. So you get to see that. Well, we can also chop this up pretty well. And you can kind of see some of the different colors and textures this way too and how pretty they are. Okay, so let's put all this in a nice bowl, a nice big bowl. No matter how small the amount of cruciferous crunch I think I'm making, it's always larger than I think it is. So let me get a quick spatula. It's always good to kind of use a spatula because you can get all these different pieces out. You're going to want to use this up within the week, but in a pinch, you can toss it in the freezer, but then you can only use it in a cooked dish. So these little pieces of cauliflower, I can mince and add to my mix. And you can do that with any of the little pieces and parts that just would not go down. Or if I'm mixing this up and I notice some parts that I feel like are a little bit too big, like let's say this one <laughs> is way too big. And when we get bowls out, a lot of times I find that we get these big, nasty, stringy, and I don't know, I don't like them. I find them unpleasant. Okay, so we've got that. And you know what? If you didn't have any cabbage, you could stop right there. And that's still an amazing, super nutritious base for anything you want to make. So with the cabbage, I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to cut it really thinly. thinly as I can. When you get to a thick part like this, you can come in and kind of shave that vein down a little bit more. And you don't have to use all your cabbage if you don't want to. And then I'm going to, actually let's do it this way, I'm going to turn this over to this side so it's a little easier for me to get the rest. Now if you like it longer, and this kind of depends on how the size of your cabbage. This cabbage was pretty small, but see how there's some pieces that are kind of large. And those are kind of those big veiny pieces usually. But see how that's mostly fine. And I'm going to cut it up maybe into about thirds. I want it to have some texture, 
but I don't want it to be like noodles. If I wanted to, any of these that are bigger, I can choose to put those aside and chop them, which is probably what I'm gonna do right now. So I'll put those aside. And you could do this with any of the other pieces maybe that you find after you've grated all your mix that are too thick for you or maybe a piece of broccoli stem that didn't get peeled enough. You can go in and just mince it by hand. You could in fact do the whole thing by hand um, if you wanted to. Don't forget, always use the back of your knife when you're scraping things from a cutting board so it doesn't dull your knife. We can see if this is enough cabbage in here or do we need more? And it's completely subjective. That's why there's not really a recipe. <laughs> it's cruciferous veggies that <laughs> you've chopped up and put in here till they're of your liking, pretty much. Um, and again, a lot of times I would put some kale in here and we could put a little bit of kale if you wanted to. I would slice it thinly, maybe, um, yeah, slice it thinly, kind of like we did the cabbage and add that in. I know I'm gonna be putting kale into just about everything because I prepped a bunch of it. So I'm gonna leave it separate for right now. And there you have it, cruciferous crunch. It's easy. Um, it does take a little bit of time. So let's say you're short on time, but you really need something to keep in the fridge for the whole week. And you don't have time for all this, or you don't have a food processor, or you're just tired. Go to the store, buy shredded carrots, buy a coleslaw mix, broccoli slaw if you can do it, um, maybe even some chopped kale or baby kale, mix it all together, Ta-da! Cheater Cruciferous Crunch. You can also go to Trader Joe's and buy Cruciferous Crunch, but you, I think it's about three or three dollars, three fifty a bag. It's a little bag. It probably makes enough for a meal or two people. This is probably close to twelve cups. And like I said, if I use a block of tofu, I'll use four cups of this, three to four cups. I up it as my family can tolerate more. So it's, that also means that you, instead of having scrambled tofu for today, you're probably making scrambled tofu for two days. So it kind of increases all that, adds fiber to you and your family. And it's just a really nice way to have something in the fridge. You can make slaw with it. You can do just about anything with it. So what I wanna know from you is what are you gonna make with your cruciferous crunch? Tell me.